the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, glory to you, Lord Christ. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Creator, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, we have a very familiar gospel reading. At least it's familiar to me. I can remember as a kid going to little, um, I don't know, parties at the church, and they'd have um, little fishing poles where you could practice fishing and catching something in a little tub to pretend like you're fishing for people. And of course, when I grew up, King James Version was a little bit bigger, and so you fish for men. But I love the idea that we're, that we're called to fish for people. I want to read the gospel, though, again to you. And when I read it, I want you to just kind of use your imagination. Think about this, you know, in the context of when it took place and now. And just use your imagination. What sparks your imagination in this text? Whoops, better get it to the right place here. And you can read along, of course, too. After John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called to them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. So when I think about this, and I wonder about, you know, trying to imagine the scene, I think of I am big, brawny men, I suppose. They had to have been strong to be able to cast out the nets into the sea and bring them back in. It wasn't easy work. We know it was hard work. I think about how stinky they probably were. <laughs> because let's face it, fishing, a great number of fish, is probably not unstinky work. They probably didn't have a lot of real soap to clean up after themselves. And this is what they did day in and day out. So I imagine that this was something that was just in their body. I also think of them as rather ordinary type people. This is their job. This is what they did. They did it day in and day out. They weren't rabbis. They weren't terribly learned. They're just ordinary people doing their work. And Jesus called them and said to them, follow me. I wonder about us being ordinary people and what that means that Jesus called us to follow me. Last week during one of our... Um, our, our, during our staff meeting, one of our meetings. It was only one meeting last week, but we had a staff meeting, and Jake 
the um, sexton here, whom many of you probably don't know, but is a delightful guy, and he's really funny, but he really amplified to me what it means to follow Jesus. And he was out in the foyer where our food shelf is, and a woman came in with her young daughter, and he welcomed her. He said, Do you, you know, are you seeing what you need here? Is there anything else that you might need? And then he offered some homemade soup and frozen cookies and asked them if they'd be interested in that too. And the woman said, yeah, we'll take that as well. To me, that's an ordinary person following Jesus to love one another. The other part that struck me as I was trying to imagine this situation is the word immediately. What does it mean to be, do something immediately? What? That's right. George said they didn't check with their wives. They just got up and did it immediately. And I, and I think about that as a kid. Um, I grew up at a time when actually at, at one point we only had one landline in the house. And some of you may remember that time when there was only one landline. And that if the phone rang, you ran immediately to answer the phone. Particularly if you were dating and you didn't want your brothers to answer it first. And go, Margaret, guess who's on the phone? So you ran to that phone and you immediately answered it. That's what you did. Nowadays, most of us have, if we have a landline still, have caller ID. So we don't answer it if it has somebody we don't know. Or we have a cell phone. And we look at it and we go, don't want to talk to that person. So we, there's no sense of immediacy to answering a call. But I wonder what it would be like to answer that call and to hear Jesus say, follow me. What would that be like? How do we answer that call and immediately follow Jesus? That's also part of my kind of um, wonderings and what kind of, you know, sparked me in my imagination about this. And then, of course, is the wondering about the good news. What is the good news? What are we supposed to hear? What are we supposed to proclaim? And the good news, of course, is that God loves us, all of us, unconditionally. That is the good news. And that we're to proclaim that in word, in deed, in actions, in the world. That is where my imagination goes and how we can do that. We spend a lot of time thinking that we, that we are not called, but you are. When you go to work, you are called. When you are out at the grocery store, you are called. When you are at the doctor's office, you are called to follow Jesus and to proclaim his word in actions and in deed. You are called. You know, not all of us, uh, this past, I shouldn't say this, this past weekend, Kate and I spent some time here at the church um, with four people who are discerning a call to holy orders. Clearly, that is not a lot of us. I mean, I look around this room right now and I can pick one, two, three, four, five of us that are called to holy orders. The rest of you are not, right? Or you haven't heard that call or you haven't discerned that call. Instead, you're just called to be a person in the world not doing anything special or significant as being a deacon and a priest, and those are not significant because we're all called to follow Jesus, lay and clergy alike. We're all called to follow Jesus, to immediately answer that call, to immediately follow him. One of the other ways that you can follow Jesus, and it's a little even more... Um, I don't want to say restricted is not a way, specialized way, is following, um, looking into the religious life. Today is Religious Life Sunday, and Kate is in her um, habit today to talk about what it means, or to, I don't know, demonstrate or be, yeah, be here, visible, in terms of someone who's part of a monastic order. That's another way you can follow Jesus. But we're all called to follow Jesus. I wonder, when you hear this gospel, what sticks out to you? Where are you called to be? How can you demonstrate the good news? How can you be Christ-like in the world? Amen.